I used to have all these different crazy addictions, which I was covering up all these different sorts of repressed emotions inside that I didn't understand at the time until I started doing some more research on how it's impacting my work life, my productivity, my overall output, motivation, focus, and so on. So just a little bit backtrack who like about me and just how it all like ties up into where I'm about to go with this video. And it's that for the longest time, I it was very difficult to quit nicotine, right? just at, at least stop it. And I didn't understand it for the longest time. Like I would go off weed or smoking pot. I would stay away from alcohol. Cannabis and alcohol, these were always two things I never really had a problem with. So it's very easy just to even take it in moderation. It's not like I do it all the time anyway. Like I haven't smoked pot or anything in like two years, alcohol rarely. But for nicotine, I don't understand why, but it was just one of those things where I started at a very early age and I just kind of continue it on through middle school, high school and, and onward. And for the longest time, I, I didn't understand why I was just attracted to it. I would understand it. I would do it. But at the same time, it would give me this sort of artificial productivity and high and this sort of, I guess you can call it energy in terms of just like, oh yeah, like it's making me focused. And sure, there is some science behind how it can calm people down, especially like some people with ADHD. I think this may, I'm not sure if this is 100%, but I think I read somewhere where it can calm people. It can have like this sort of effect on your brain where, yeah, it is a nootropic. It can help you think better, but in the end, it is screwing up your health in the long run. And what I wanted to mention about this is that at some point a few years back when I was doing when I was running like an e-commerce store and stuff like that, I was really going pretty heavy on the smoking with that. And I'm not sure why, but what I came to realize is that I was covering up a lot of the pain, the hard work, the long hours I was working on a day to day basis. And how I was always just kind of putting it into a closet per se, right? As if I'm just ignoring all these emotions. And I didn't understand that. But now looking in hindsight with all the information I'm about to share and just some tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the, the months, the years, whatever, in terms of understanding what it is and how it's unlocked a lot of motivation, more focus and productivity. Now it comes to like the limelight of how damaging it was and that it was just really all a form of escape. I wasn't, it was, I was just grueling through the work. I was grueling through it, I was just pushing through it. But inside it, there was like this pain, there was all this stuff burning up that I was just kind of like stuffing deeper and deeper into the closet that I wasn't addressing. And really what all this is, is just pain and emotions telling you that there's something wrong in your life that you're doing and that you have to solve it right like if you read philosophy books spirituality books all these different books what all these books tell you is that when there's pain when there's suffering all that is is just an indication that there's something wrong in your life and that it's time for change because either one you don't align with it anymore it doesn't make sense for you to do it and you know you don't want to do it and two that this is a gift if you haven't saw my video on addiction, I posted a few months ago, check it out. But all this really is, is, is a gift for transformation in terms of what you can learn from it, what you can become out of it, and how it can ultimately transform you into someone you aspire to be like. So now let's get more into detail in terms of how repressing these emotions, addictions, and stuff like that can actually be hindering your productivity, your output, and your overall professional life. So when it comes to doing these different stimulants, it could be anything, by the way, like one of the most biggest legal drugs right now is coffee. And I'm not saying it's bad or anything like sure, like you can have a cup or so every here and there. But when it comes to overconsumption, it can be a very, very bad addiction. So all these different addictions, right, these drugs, these stimulants that are out there available on the market, whether it's cigarettes, whether it's weed, whether it's alcohol, it could be anything, any other sort of vices. All they're doing is they're inducing the stress response in, in your brain, in your body, everywhere, in your central nervous system. And what's happening is that you're kicking yourself into a fight or flight mode, which is basically the survival state. And when that happens, you're basically 
increasing your blood pressure, you're reducing blood flow into the brain and more into like the muscles, you're increasing your heart rate, you're having other sides of you that are primal, that are being aroused, whereas you're not the most likely of odds to be functioning from like a rational state, right? Because your emotions are intercepting the, the main flow of like, all right, you're getting this input and now it's time to transform some sort of output from it. And what happens is when emotions intercept logic, right? Because there is this theory called the triune brain theory where there's three different distinct parts of your brain, which is one, the reptilian, one of the most ancient, and then there's the mammalian, which has to do with emotions. And then the third one, which is the neocortex, which is the most recent evolution of the human brain. And that has to do obviously with logic. So basically humans, we act out of emotions primarily, right? Even the logic, right? We, we act out of emotions and then we justify with logic. But also what I want to say is that we're always overstimulating our nervous systems, our bodies, kicking themselves into fight or flight. The body's natural response is going to be something from the survival state. You're going to want to maybe do something. You're, you're going to be more prone to do something impulsive, emotional, and it's not going to be coming out of a clear thinking stance or a position from where it can be something more justifiable or something you can be proud of versus something that is spontaneous instant it can potentially lead to regret or some sort of poor decision made and obviously when this happens you're putting yourself in this sort of aroused state and when you're aroused state well what happens is you have little to any clear thinking because you're coming from this primal state and historically in the, with the ancients they used to make this distinction with the lower mind and the higher mind the lower mind used to be classified as like the, the animalistic mind, right? People coming from their primal natures, being more suggestible to it, or just prone to take some sort of action from it. Whereas those from who would think from their higher mind, also called the noose, which in Greek, I believe it's called or pronounced as the mind, right? When, when you're operating from the mind, it's from logic, rationality clear thinking. Now, as we just mentioned, having these stimulants influence your central nervous system or just your whole entire nervous system in the first place, sure, they can give you this sense of a productivity, but realistically, it's a artificial productivity. And sure, it's making you more alert. Maybe it's making you more focused. Maybe it's, it's giving you this sense of, oh, like I can conquer anything. But realistically, when you look at the science of what it's doing to your biology, it's actually screwing up your health, which in the long run can influence your energy levels. Like for instance, let's, let's take caffeine for an instance. If you become too dependent on it, right now I'm going through this challenge where I'm basically 30 days caffeine free, and I'm not sure how long I'm going to do it. But what happens is when you're overly dependent on, for instance, like coffee or caffeine, you have this massive high in the beginning of the day. And then after that, it starts to wane. It just starts to wane. And then you're, it's like the way your dopamine cycle works. The next time you have the anticipation for caffeine, you're like, it's like you're crashing and you become dependent on it just to start your day, right? Just to feel good in the morning, just to feel like you can easily get out of bed. Whereas if you stop, if you kick the, just the habit, you have this more stable, natural energy throughout the day. And then by the time, it comes to going to sleep, well, it's time to go to sleep, right? Same thing with like nicotine or anything. You, you wake up in the morning, you have this anticipation and you get this sense of like, oh, if I go smoke nicotine, I'm gonna go get this reward. Well, now you know by the time you sit by your desk, you're gonna get this reward, you're gonna take the hit of the nicotine, weed, whatever, and you're gonna feel motivated to continue doing your work, right? But it's really just this false sense of it when behind the scenes, like in your body, your operating system, there's all these different things going on with all the chemistry and the cells and everything going on, whether it's like with caffeine restricting blood flow to your brain, right? Which actually influences different areas in terms of your brain health, brain growth, memory, recall, all these different areas that I mean, I can't probably recall off the top of my head, but just know in the background, all this stuff is going on that's influencing your cognitive function, your productivity and your longevity, right? Even just like health in terms of energy levels, sustainability, being able to actually 
prevent burnout and stuff like that because think about it even just like with caffeine and i know i'm kind of like ranting here but i'm just trying to like demonstrate a point but this is also integral with all other kinds of stimulants or artificial like productivity high givers like for instance with caffeine sure it's going to block these certain receptors i forget what they're called but i think it's uh adenosine it has something to do with adenosine and when it blocks the receptors what it does is like it makes you more alert and prevents you from going to sleep. But what happens when you prevent or when you start losing out on sleep? You become sleep deprived. And when that happens, you basically degrade your brain. Your brain becomes unstable. And on top of that, when you wake up the next day, you have lower energy levels. And what happens? Well, your willpower now is diminished. And when your willpower is diminished, you make poor decisions and you can't basically sustain a, a nice productive day getting in like a nice set of deep work in or something that is like fully focused and concentrated. So these have significant influences on your health, your impact, and your work output. It's not like we don't have any control over it. We do, but the thing is that there's this reward system within our body, which has a lot to do with what's also called as dopamine. I was just kind of hinting it, but dopamine is basically this neurotransmitter that acts as like the, the reward system within your biochemistry, right? particularly in the brain, it gives you this sense of anticipation that, oh, if I do this behavior, this action, whatever, that there's this going to be a reward as a byproduct of it. Like, oh, if I wake up in the morning, if I go to the kitchen, I know the pot is already turned on to make me my coffee. I'm getting this anticipation of, oh, hey, if I go downstairs to the kitchen, I'm going to be able to brew up some nice coffee, right? And then I'll be able to feel good about myself. It's going to be the start of my day. I'm going to be ready to go do some work, right? But the thing in the end is that if we do not become conscious of these things and in terms of becoming more aware of like, what are the consequences of this, right? Like, sure, the immediate consequence is that we may feel good, right? But when you start thinking in second order consequences in terms of, okay, I may feel good now, but the consequence following that is actually going to be something Net negative on my life, meaning now I'm dependent on this. Now I have to wake up every single morning doing this. Now I have to invest money into this. Now I have to also consider that, oh, if I stop doing this, there's going to be like a three to like potentially 14 day window that I have to go through, which is just pure withdrawal, right? And that is terrible if anyone has gone through that. So it's Im important to take into consideration is being mindful of where are you getting your dopamine from? Because most of these artificial like stimulants all these things like screwing up your body it's just all cheap dopamine it's literally all just cheap dopamine and you're basically raising the baseline of your dopamine so you require being overly stimulated on whether it's porn whether it's weed whatever it may be you're becoming overly reliant on all these things to stimulate and give you this sense of reward when realistically it's all just BS. It's literally just ones and zeros inside of your brain. Like, oh, if your brain realizes that, hey, if I do this, I'm going to get a reward. Yes, go do it. Right. But if you don't do it, well, now there's pain because, oh, like now I feel deprived of it. And that's what happens where when like addiction kicks in, when you feel like the sense of deprivation of something. Now it's time like, oh, your body, your brain is telling you to, to go do that thing because you got a reward from it last time. When realistically, when you just insert some logic into it, you can intercept that and actually take back control over your reward system, your health, your motivation and all these different life areas. Like, sure, you may be like overly stimulated at this point to have like a higher baseline where you're reliant on these things, on these things, excuse me but you have to remove it because it's just cheap dopamine. Now, what happens when you remove all these things? Well, what happens is you become more high on life. You become more high on life to eat. Like I remember like when I started removing nicotine from my life, when I started like even just more, more recently, when I took out caffeine, the most random things, I kid you not, the most random things were giving me so much pleasure, like just starting to learn how to be a better cook, right? Even just the most mundane food recipes or just like dishes, just simple rice and vegetables and maybe some thighs, right? Chicken thighs. Like it tastes amazing. It's crazy. It tastes like amazing because now what your brain is doing, it's realizing that, oh, hey, I am not getting reward anymore from all these artificial stimulants. So where do I get rewards from now? And that is from other things in life, whether it's being more productive, 
whether it's from optimizing your diet, optimizing your sleep, figuring out how you can become better at working out or like searching for new workouts. Like just your brain starts to find new ways how to reward itself better, right? Rather than from this old artificial cheap ways, you're rewarding yourself with dopamine. Now your brain is optimizing to find other new avenues, new ways for you to feel a sense of reward. Now this whole video is not going to be about, oh, how do you quit your addictions, right? But more so, how can we learn from these addictions? Now, where I want to go with this is how do we solve this? So the very first thing, well, even like the very first thing I did was I tried to just cut out the noise with all this stuff I was suppressing myself with. Because in the end, these emotions are trying to tell you something. The very first thing you can possibly do is just quit. Just quit one thing at a time. You don't have to go two or three or like do everything because that's going to be extremely difficult. If you want to have like this superhuman performance, you have to pick one thing. It just starts with one thing. And then over time, it just compounds into different other areas of your life that you want to optimize. Start with one thing. And then when you realize it's out of your life, what's going to happen is that you are going to have this noise that just appears. And that noise is everything you've been covering under the rug, metaphorically. And when that happens, it's best to like journal, it's best to assess yourself, reflect, and just have some alone time to yourself to figure out what exactly it is that these emotions are telling you. Because these emotions are clearly indicating that there's a problem in your life that you want to solve. Because sure, you're telling people of the world yourself that it's easy to quit nicotine, that it's easy to quit some drug you're on, but why haven't you done it already? And if you haven't done it already, there's, it's probably just a signifying or just like a signal that there's something in you that you're choosing to ignore. For me, it was, I was just overworking. I have this, this thinking, this faulty thinking where I just always had to work, 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 and work. It, it was honestly addiction to work. I don't know why, but I had that. And another thing about that was that sure I was working, but I dreaded doing the thing I was working on. And it was sort of just me plastering or just like taping up like all these cracks in my professional life where realistically I didn't really want to do it. And as a result, I was using all these stimulants, all these different things just to cover it up just so I can get past another day. Like, believe me, I would be working like eight, 12 hours a day, maybe even more, literally, just to get some work in. And by the end of it, I'd feel burnt out. I'd feel like crap. My sleep would be all messed up. I, yeah, my health was suffering. And in the end, it's all just artificial right? All these stimulants, these feelings you're feeling is just artificial. And it's just something that is not natural to your being. And it becomes very clear also, when you quit something, when you stop doing something, because there's so much pain involved. And I'm not talking about the stimulant, I'm just talking about like the activity, the process or something in your life causing you that pain. It becomes very obvious that when you quit these stimulants, and then you go do something else, the pain is gone. But then when you surface back around, when you cycle back around to go and doing that thing that was originally causing you pain, it becomes clear that when the pain resurfaces, it was this thing causing it. But it may not be apparent in the present moment. So that's the very first thing you can learn how to optimize is just figuring out what these emotions are telling you. The next thing you can do is figure out how you can get high on life. And this is something I got from Tony Robbins, but I've been applying it a crap ton in my life. And honestly, like the most random things just give me natural highs where it just feels good to be alive, feels good to do work, feels good even to just get on camera now and just start recording. I don't know why, but here's what you can do. Two ways, and that is changing your focus or in terms of what you focus on and changing your state. When you change your state, right? Like that's like the, the meta thing we're trying to change here, the state. And we'll get to in just a moment why changing your state is important, right? Like, like the importance of the states and why people escape it and stuff like that. But there's two ways you can do this. One is by the questions you ask, right? What you're looking for. Like what questions are you asking yourself? Ask something inspirational. What goals do you want to achieve? Where do you want to be? Get, what are you curious about? Like what information is curious? What do you like learning about? Or even reframing the way you see things like, oh, what if it's not this way? And what if it's that way? Because we're always just searching for problems. If we're always just looking at the negativity, it's always just going to like be bringing us down to the state. And then when we're in that very low frequency state or whatever you want to call it. Well, that's when you're the most prone for depression or sadness or finding ways to like bandage all of your problems. So when you start 
changing the questions and the focus you have in your life in terms of, oh, what if I could achieve this? What if this was a possible, right? You change your focus and you start changing the direction you potentially even aim and traject or just project your life into. The other way is with physiology. When you change your physiology through movement, whether it's through doing exercise or even with walking, it just changes how you feel. So those are two ways how you can like, quote unquote, get high in life. It's changing what you focus on by asking different questions. And the second way is by changing your physiology. And I mentioned this just a few moments ago about the whole thing with states. And there's something interesting that Stephen Kotler in one of his books talked about was just the altered states economy where, and by the way, this guy's like a human performance guru, but what this guy talked about was that there's this giant economy in the world where people capitalize purely on altering your states, right? Altering your states, whether it's through stimulants, through drugs, or whether it's through inputting sugars and stuff like that into your food to make you more addicted. And all this is really doing is just changing your state, right? There's like this multi, multi trillion dollar economy, right? And they simply just capitalize on all these different feelings and ways they can influence your way of feeling just so you can just come back because they, they know if biologically you can get hooked on something well hey like if you start feeling like crap i have a high retention rate for the customer because the once the customer starts feeling like crap like with coffee with nicotine once it's not there or anything like that well they'll cycle around they'll come back they'll get some more and now guess what they i got another customer right or not another customer they bought from me again so there's this whole entire economy where it just capitalizes purely on just altering your state of consciousness and this is also something interesting that ties into David R. Hawkins' work, where he talked about the different states of consciousness. And there's this like graphic which shows all the different states someone can have. And when we're in these low states, right, we think out of them, it's like whether it's anger, depression, hatred, whatever, sadness. Well, even just goes back to like what I was just saying a few moments ago with that Tony Robbins exercise. When you're in these low frequency states or whatever it may be, and you act out of it, you're not the most likely to be the most creative the most abundant, or even the most energetic to produce some sort of creative work. Whereas if you're in something that is more loving, more happy, more exciting to be in, joyful, you're more excited about the work you're about to do. Like imagine the person who's so excited to like work on their stuff every single day. That person is going to be extremely productive, extremely superhuman in terms of their output and what they can do, right? If they're just excited and they sound like it. So that was just something I, I wanted just to touch on really briefly. But in the end, your body's going to thank you for taking this proactive action. You're gonna be running on clean, stable energy. You're gonna be more productive. Your mood is gonna be stable. You're gonna be optimizing for longevity. Your health is gonna be very great. You're gonna be more productive. And the quality of your output, most importantly, is gonna be superb. It's just gonna to be top notch because it's not artificial. You know you're running on, on clean fuel and you'll just be able to think more clearly. Like that's the most important thing. You wanna think clearly and you want to produce massive output without being in a survival state or something which negatively influences your output. So that's going to be all for the video. I hope there was a lot of insights, a lot of interesting value you got from it. So other than that, appreciate you once again for staying this long to the end of the video, and I will see you in another one.